Welcome, and thank you for stopping by Biker Church, Wiley, Texas. Let's go on in and see what J.R. Franklin has to teach us today. Now I can hear me. I got to hear me, because I, I got to listen to me as much as y'all do. Trust me. What? David, aren't you supposed to be on the road at noon? <laughs> Good to have y'all this morning. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Say amen. amen. Well, when you get ready to leave, you ain't going to be as energetic, I promise you. I don't know. You may be ready to get out of here. That's true. <laughs> it is. Who turned my page? You did. Oh, Lord. Jimmy, did you go over here and turn my page? Boy, well, y'all almost got messed up big time. Jimmy? I know Jimmy didn't do this because Jimmy wouldn't mess with my book. Who said that? Who said he would? I wanted to tell you, thank you for being honest because he would do it. I know he would. If I had a thought of it, I would have done it. You would have done it. Maybe, maybe, maybe next week. <laughs> I just gave him an idea, sir. I know. Guess I need to be that influential. <laughs> When's that going to stop? <laughs> You've been influencing people badly for years. Yep. So where are we going in the Bible, JR? Well, we were going to go to Malachi, but since I can't find it now. <laughs> it's in the Old Testament. No kidding, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Do something with our... Hey, hey, last book of the Old Testament. Well, right before Matt, what? Y'all are really bad at the Bible, aren't you? Because Malachi is not right next to. Never mind. What about Psalms and Proverbs and all that before you get to? Go help you. Oh, Lord. Malachi is after. It's right here. Oh. Well, let's go to the Lord anyway. Y'all ready? Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this time we have to come together. I thank you for all the blessings you've given us. Father, I thank you for the blessings that you're about to give us. Father, I ask that you just bless the rest of this service. Forgive those who need forgiving and forgive me for being so... I don't know this morning. Yeah. Anyway, just be with us as we go through the service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Where's my deacons? Uh, they're busy. What do you need? I need some sacraments passed out. Communion okay. Sunday. I got plenty of deacons and elders. And they should be able to do this. I know it don't take all of them back here to count money. Yes, it does. <laughs> they need all their fingers and toes. We wouldn't get much of it. I don't want to go back there when they have one shoe off, or that's both of them. But anyway, thank you, sir. Wait a minute. Bible says, "Don't be a glutton." Little late for that one on you, isn't it? Thou oh. shall not judge either. Hey, hey, I resemble that remark. <laughs> yes, you do. We're starting the new year off. Well, 2020, baby. Hey, I stood, I picked my left foot up. Hey, if y'all think this is bad, wait till next week. This is just the first week of the new year. There's going to be some changes made around this joint. Yeah. Consequences and repercussions. <laughs> I don't know about repercussions, but you get too you get too too elaborate around here. You make people mad. When all else fails. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. Really, truly, if you're not having fun in your church this morning, Amen. change churches. Amen. Church is not about just coming in and being all there. Eh. Looks like you're stuck on 
Thank you, sir. You're a gentleman and a scholar. I found it. I found it without my glasses. Part of the sermon, so you better be quiet. <laughs> it starts out, Woe is me. <laughs> when the scripture starts out, Woe is me, you know it's bad, right? Huh? We got it out yet, guys? After those people doing their arguments, there's hard that they're doing. Well, 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 well. Wake up, Steve. Yeah, I'm right. Right. I ain't going to read again, y'all. Sorry. See what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that the truth? Trades, that's good. At least. This is the biggest crowd we've had in a while. Yeah, so what's up with that? And while I'm, while I'm thinking of that, Brad and Mary, welcome back. Yes. Kevin, yes. good to have you back too. You feeling better, I hope? I hope you ain't still sick. Okay. Because if you are... <laughs> we don't need no more sick folks in here. Don't make me stand at the door. If this is your first time ever here, would you raise your hand? Somebody get this man a card. Congratulations, brother. Good to have you. Y'all get him a visitor's card. Make sure he gets one. Cause... It's a little bit different what you're used to, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's okay to say so, bro. It's okay. There is nothing normal about these people, okay? Most of them, most of them got a day pass, okay? And the pastor, he's pretty sturdy. Okay? He's a pretty stable guy. Yeah, okay. Like it? All right. Well, hang around about 15. Hang around about 15, 20 minutes. If you don't find something here you like, let us know. We'll change somebody. <laughs> Speak up. She's trying to talk, Margaret. Be quiet. I got good news. Okay. God is always good. Absolutely. Somebody? Amen. He's always good. All the time. Amen. The reason... Oh, Lord. The reason people don't get healed is not because it's not God's willing. The reason people don't get healed is because they don't believe they can be. I'm going to tell you a short story before we do communion. Y'all remember the... the, the Roman soldier that came to Christ and his daughter was dying. And he said to the, the Roman soldier, said to Christ, I need you to pray for my daughter. She's dying. Christ said, let's go. The soldier said, listen, you don't have to go with me to do what I ask you to do. And he told Jesus, he said, you are a man of authority. Your word is good enough. You just saying it will make it happen. Jesus told him, go home. Your daughter is fine. And he said, no other, no other person have I seen this much faith in. 
That man knew that if he asked Christ to do it, and Christ agreed to it, that Christ didn't have to go anywhere. All he had to do was say it. And the reason that guard's daughter lived is because his faith in Christ said, ask Jesus for it. We ask Christ for your help. I don't have to have Jesus come to your house. I don't have to have a big celebration of it. All I have to have is the authority that Christ gave us. And he healed this young lady. Thank you, God, for all that. And you're dismissed. <laughs> and that's a sidebar. That ain't even the sermon today. Everybody got their communion in their hand now? Jesus told his disciples, go into the upper room and prepare the dinner for the feast of the Passover. And he wanted to celebrate one more time with them before he took to the cross. And he told them to go and prepare the meal. And they did. They went into the upper room and they feasted on the feast of the Passover. At the end of the meal, which was tradition, Christ took the bread. And he broke that bread. And he prayed over it in this manner. He said, Dear Heavenly Father, this is the bread that represents my body that will be broken for them. Take and eat of this and do it in remembrance of me. They ate of the bread. And he picked up the cup. He said, this cup is the wine that represents my blood that I'm going to shed today, or I'm going to shed for you, that washes away your sins. Do you understand that the blood is what washed away the sins? His blood washes away sins. He said, Father, this is my blood. Take and drink of it for the removal of sin." And after they drank, the disciples were sitting there and he talked to them a little bit more. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. And do it often. We do it here at this church every month on the first Sunday. But can I tell you something today? You need to take the elements of Christ every day of your life. Amen. You don't have to have a cracker and a cup of grape juice. You don't have to have the elements in your hand. You don't even have to know how to do the story. All you have to remember is this. Christ took a beating. And His body was broken. For your illnesses and your sicknesses and your plagues and your curses and your addictions and all the things that go on in your life. When He was tied to that beating post and beaten, every stripe on His back, every lick that He took was for you. And then when they took him to the cross and they hung him on the cross, his body was ripped to shreds. The Bible said that he had chunks of meat missing. Big chunks of skin pulled off. Bleeding profusely. Can you imagine that? That's the beating me and you deserve. That's the beating we deserve for the way we live our lives. But Christ took it for us. And he took it to the cross with him. He took every sin known to man. Every sin that you could commit and every sin that I could commit. He put those sins on himself. Weighed himself down with our sins. Then they put the cross on his shoulder to carry it to the mountain. And he drug that cross across the city and up the hill. And when he got there, they nailed him to that cross. And a lot of people say, well, he's nailed him to the cross. Do you have any idea how excruciating that would be? I've had people debate whether they stuck the, through the palm of his hand or through the, the haunch of his arm. I'm not going to debate that. I look at it like this. If you drove it through the hand, it's going to hurt bad. If you drive it through this part of your arm, it's going to hurt bad. It's going to hurt. They stretched his arm out and they took that spike. And they held his arm out there. And they took a big mallet. It wasn't a framing hammer, guys. No. This was a mallet. Yeah. And they drove that spike through his arm. And then they took his other arm and they stretched it to the point that it wasn't just putting your arms out like this. We all hold our arms out like this to praise God, don't we? Amen. 
No pain involved, right? Let Jimmy get a hold of one arm and let Tony get a hold of the other and let them have a tug of war with your body. They stretched him out to the point that his ligaments were hurting and nailed him down. As custom in that time, they made a little block for him to stand on. And he puts his feet on that block and he holds himself up. And the way a crucifixion works, if you can raise yourself up and take that pressure off, you can breathe. But when you've done that for so long, your legs get tired, and your arms are tired, and your body gets tired, and you slaunch down. When you slaunch down, you cut off your hair. So every time his knees bent, he had a hard time breathing. And he could, but they took his legs and they crossed his feet. You understand that? They crossed his feet like this. And they took another nail and went through both feet into that block. How many of y'all have had a cut on the bottom of your foot? How hard is it for you to function with that cut on the bottom of your foot? Now imagine yourself with a nail hole going through the tops of both feet and out the bottom. And all your weights on it. Are y'all getting an idea of what he suffered? Not even close, brother. You ain't, your wildest imagination cannot believe. You cannot fathom how much pain the man was in. But then he hung on that cross. And what he was going through was bad. But the worst was yet to come. Because the longer he hung there, the more he realized something. And the Bible's plain about it. A lot of people get mad when I say this, but the Bible is plain about it. Christ felt His Father turn away from Him. God said He'll never leave us or forsake us, will He? He didn't say He'd sit there and watch us. Because sin on Jesus was so bad. And God hates sin so much that He couldn't even look at His own Son. And Jesus felt that emptiness. That's hell, folks. That's the beginning of hell. When you can't find God, that's the beginning of hell. Some of us in this room have felt death. Some of us have actually felt what it feels like to be separated from life. It's not a good feeling. You wake up and you're not really sure where you're at. You wake up and you really don't know what happened. But Christ is on that cross. And He's looking out across the, con the congregation that's there. He says something very, very, very important. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they've done. Think about that for a minute. Forgive them for they know not what they do. What are they doing? They're actually killing the Son of God. And He's asking for forgiveness for them. Hi. <laughs> but listen, guys. This story has a tremendous impact on people, doesn't it? They made a movie called The Passion. How many of y'all saw it? Pretty terrible movie. Pretty awesome movie to watch. But I'm going to tell you something about that movie. It wasn't nearly as gloomy and grim as the day when it happened. The things that went on that day were terrible. It was probably the worst day in the world. But yet, through the worst day in the world, God did something so tremendous. And so lovable and so good. You see, up until then, when Christ breathed that last breath and said it is finished, there was a there was a big curtain in the temple that separated us from man and God. Up until that point, we could not go face to face with God. But that veil ripped from the top. To the bottom. And you got to remember something. That veil was tall. You can't say somebody climbed up to the top of it and cut it down the middle because that ain't what happened. 
You can't say somebody grabbed it at the bottom and started cutting it and pulled it apart. Because that ain't what happened. It split from the top to the bottom. Now, is that a significant thing? Yes, it is. Do you know how significant that really is? That means we no longer have to have somebody else go into a room and confess our sins. It means we don't have to go into the room and have somebody else talk to God for us. It, does, it means that we no longer have to depend on somebody else's goodness to get our goodness back. Amen. We can do it ourselves simply by asking God into our life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Right. My sermon is going completely where I didn't want it to go, but guess what, guys? <laughs> it's going there. Today is a day that if you want your repentance to take place, all you have to do, the only thing you have to do, is ask Christ into your life. Amen. Start the new year out right. Start the year out with God on your side. Start the year out believing that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Start the day out believing that whatever you ask for in Christ will happen. Oh, I ain't saying name it, claim it. I ain't that kind of preacher. But I do tell you this. You have not because you ask not. Amen. You want blessings in your life? How many of y'all want to be blessed this year? Amen. Start living the way God called you. Come on, man. Live the way God called you to live. How did He call you to live? Did He call you living from sorrow to sorrow? No, He called you to live glory to glory. And I'm repeating Charlie, and I hate that. But it's the truth. He did take us from glory to glory. He doesn't want us suffering. He doesn't want us homeless. He doesn't want us broken. He doesn't want us sick. He don't want us lame. He wants us to walk and talk and walk in the presence of Jesus Christ and be glad that we are a servant of God. I don't need you to intercede for me. I don't need some man in a dark closet to forgive me of my sins. I don't need somebody else to say, Come in this place and let me pray for you. I can pray to God myself. Amen. I can sit at the feet of my Savior. And I can ask Him whatever I need. I can ask Him what I want. And if I live the way He called me to live in the obedience of that Word, He says if I live in that obedience, I'm willing to work for it a little bit, I can have it. It's not about what Jimmy does for me or what Paul does or what Michael does. It's about JR. It's about what JR does. You don't have to like me. You don't have to agree with me on everything. As long as I agree with God and I live the way He told me to live, then I'm going to be blessed this year. Amen. I'm going to be blessed and blessed and blessed. I made my mind up a long time ago. I want to live for what God said, not for what people say. Because I found out something about people. A long time ago, I found out something about people. Y'all stink. Y'all will let me down. You will hurt my feelings. And for a guy with a ninth grade education, I think I do pretty well. Amen. Because I follow what God said. I follow what God tells me to do. Now a lot of y'all don't know this, but I have a ninth grade education from Brother High School. But I also have a year and a half of Southern Southern Mississippi University. I also have a GED. I also have about oh eighteen or nineteen different certificates of completion of courses. I may look dumb. I may talk silly. I may not can spell. And I may not do math in the modern day way. But I guarantee you, I can tell you how much money I got in my bank. I can tell you how to divide my account up to make it work. I can tell you how to live for God. And I can show you how to live for this world. And I can show you how to prosper in this world. And I can teach you how to live in a way that you will prosper. Amen. That's God's education. The School of Hard Knocks is the best school to go to. Oh yes, people. I was not always this guy. 
Thank God. Because without my education in the world out there, I wouldn't know how to communicate with you. I wouldn't know how to show that addict how to get sober. I wouldn't know how to show that drug dealer how to lay dope down and get away from it. I wouldn't know how to live in a, in a bankruptcy state and survive. God took me through some stuff. To show me some things. And the biggest thing He showed me was, I can live for God and live prosperous. Amen. Oh yeah, I'm prosperous. I'm probably the richest man in this room as far as I know. I got good friends. I got good food. I got a good home. I got cars. I got motorcycles. I got this and I got that. But you know what the greatest thing I have is? I have a relationship with my Lord and Savior. And that gives me the greatest gifts I can have. Oh, I got up this morning. I was like everybody else. First phone call I got was somebody from the church sick. Won't be able to make it today. I want to tell y'all something. I love y'all. I really do. And I miss you when you're not here. But the first thing I want to hear on Sunday morning is not, I'm not going to be there today because. Amen. That's the last thing I want to hear. Surprise me. Does that make sense? Surprise me. If you don't show up, surprise me. If you show up, really surprise me. Because it's hard to live in this world today the way it is. Y'all are my brothers and sisters. I look around this room and I got all kinds of family sitting in here. I got four or five mamas in here. I got aunts and uncles and cousins and brothers and sisters. All of y'all are here. This is my family. Amen. God is my daddy. <clears throat> and y'all are all children of His. Amen. I hope. Amen. When you leave here today, if you're not, I hope you are. Amen. Because I'm going to give you an invitation here in a minute to ask you to come to the cross and lay your sins down. I'm going to ask you to take on something you may have never taken on in your life. I'm going to ask you to make a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, but I got that, Jr. I've known about Jesus all my life. Congratulations. Satan's known about Him since you before you were born. But knowing who He is is not enough. Did I get that through to y'all this morning? Knowing who Jesus is is not enough. Because there will be many that come to Him at the last days when they stand before Him for judgment. And say, I heal people with your name. I work with you. I went to church. I tithed. I did all the things I was supposed to do. And he's going to look at them. And he's going to say some words that are going to devastate them. He's going to say, depart from me. For I know you not. But Jesus. No, there's no but to it. There's no second Jesus. Y'all understand that? Got one shot. That's why you're breathing on this earth. Oh, if you don't do it today, I ain't going to say you might get killed on the way home because if you make it home, then you're going to say, well, I didn't get killed, Derek. I didn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you this for sure. God is coming. Christ is coming back. Does any of y'all know what day? Does anybody know when it's going to happen? Let me, you know, let, let me let you in on a secret. The disciples asked Christ when He was coming back. You know what Christ said? No one knows the hour except the Father. So if you think you know when He's coming back, you better change your mind. When did He become God? Because <laughs> if Jesus don't know, we sure don't know. But I do know this. I want you to listen to me very closely. Every one of us in this room has a date. We have a date with a thing called death. Every one of us is going to die in this flesh. Every one of us. This flesh is going to stop, lay down and die. If it happens to you and your name's not in the book of life, guess what? Game over. 
you're going to hell. And if you think there ain't a hell, let me assure you of something. There is a hell. You know how I know there's a hell? God said so. God said He made a lake of fire to put the demons and Satan and all that were lost in. Oh, we get into theology, we get into all this Bible arguing and post-mortem, post-all this. Let me tell you something. It don't matter. Because when your flesh dies, your soul is going somewhere. Your soul is either going to heaven or it's going to hell. Which one do you want? Which one do you want? You want to go to heaven or you want to go to hell? If you want to go to heaven, there's a way to get there. Now back in my old days, I used to tell you how to get to hell. Now I'm going to tell you how to get to heaven. In a minute, when I call on you, and I tell you to bow your heads, and I ask you that question, are you saved? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? If you don't have a personal relationship with Him, Y'all know what I mean by personal relationship? One on one. One on one. You and Jesus sitting on a park bench talking about things and eating sandwiches. If you don't have that relationship, let me assure you of something. When you take your last breath on this earth, the next breath you take is going to be really hot. You think Texas in August is hot? You ain't seen nothing yet. They put Texas here to remind folks of what's coming. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's the other reason I know there's a hell. Yeah. And I think the gates of hell are kind of south of us a little ways. <laughs> right around that river thing that they're trying to build a wall around. But we're not going to get into politics, are we? Thank you, Mr. Trump, for what you've done this last week. We give you praise for that in the name of God. Thank God we have a president that's willing to stand up and say no more. Amen. That's all my political side of it right there. I'm going to tell you something this morning, and I want you to get this through your heads. I came in here joking and laughing and cutting up, and I was going to read Malachi, but like I told Diane in there in the back a while ago, I had a couple of sermons that were dancing around in my head, and I was fighting which one I was going to preach. I didn't preach either one of them. I preach the one God gave me. God said there's somebody in this room today that needs to hear the, the story of salvation and the truth of how to be saved. And I'm going to give you the truth of how to be saved. You ready? Real hard. Difficult thing as you'll ever do. Bow your head. Close your eyes. And repeat this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I am lost and broken. I know that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Born of the virgin birth. Born of the virgin birth lived on this earth. Lived on this earth crucified, on crucified on the cross. Put in the grave. Put in the grave and resurrected. And, resurrected. and that you're coming back for us. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And I will live for you for the rest of my life. These things I ask. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's how you do it, guys. Now, if you prayed that prayer this morning, wherever you are, whatever you're doing right now, whether it's this morning, this afternoon, tomorrow, whenever you see this message or hear it, whatever you're doing at that moment, if you prayed that prayer for the first time and you truly believe that God is real and you believe in your heart that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you are now saved. Amen. And you can walk in the presence of God for the rest of your life. Amen. That's my truth. Always oh, it going to be an easy walk? No. Not always. Is it going to be a simple thing to do? No. Not always. But I want you to remember this. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter how bleak it looks through your eyes, you don't see things through God's eyes. What you see with your eyes scare you. Unless you're looking through Christ's eyes. And you can walk in peace. 
you can walk with the assurance that God's got this. One of my favorite things to say is God's got this. No matter what it is. When I'm worried and beaten up and broken, I look up and I say, thank you, God, because you got this. I can't do it on my own. Trust me, guys. I messed it up for a long, long time trying to do it on my own until I surrendered to God. And when I surrendered everything to Him, oh, it looks bleak some days. I get angry some days. I get hurt some days. Guys, there's days that I want to get in my room, close the door, crawl underneath my bed, pull the covers over my head, and say to heck with it. I'm tired. There are days when I do that. (laughs) But what happens when I get under that bed and I get under those covers and I'm laying there by myself, something miraculous happens. God steps into there with me. And by the time we get up, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go back out there and fight some more. I'm ready to pray for some more people. I'm ready to see God's glory happen. This morning, we are so blessed that all of y'all are here. There's a lot of folks that I'm so happy to see again. Y'all may not agree with me on everything I preach. You may not agree with everything I say. You may not agree with the way I look. But I'm going to tell y'all a secret. This is between each one of us, okay? I don't like everything you do either. (coughs) But I serve a God that said I have to love you. I have to love you. Because He told me to. And He also said if I'm obedient to His Word, and that I live the way He called me to live, that He will open the the windows of heaven and allow blessings to flow. And I got a secret for y'all. If the man can open the window, he can also close it. And you don't want to be cut off from God's blessings. You do not want to be cut off from God's blessings. So if you prayed that prayer this morning, I'm going to get back to business now. i got work to do. If you prayed that prayer this morning, will not you slip your hand up in the air and say, that was me, I prayed it for the first time. And I really meant it for the first time. I really and truly meant that I need Jesus in my life. And that I need God to come and live in me forever. You two brothers there on that inside row, I need y'all to come up here with me if you would. Can y'all come up here? Because see, I prayed that prayer for you. I asked, I led that prayer. But can I tell you something? You remember me a while ago saying it has to be a personal relationship? You have to ask Him in your own way. You understand that? So I'm going to ask each one of you. I'm going to come to you and I want you to pray a prayer of salvation. Use your own words. It doesn't have to be all drawn out and pretty. Just be from your heart. And know in your heart that when you pray, God is real. Okay? Brother, you want to go first? Go ahead. Dear God, I come to you today with a bow of the head and a humble heart. I've been praying one last thing. Welcome to the family of Christ, guys. God bless you.
going on in here this morning. Brother, give me something with a beat to it, girl. I need y'all to praise God this morning. I need you to praise the presence of the Holy Spirit here this morning. I need you to praise God that we are still living in a country where people can come to God and give their life to Christ and live forever in the kingdom of heaven with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father, for your love. I give it to you, the glory, the honor, and the, the privilege of serving you. Dear Heavenly Father God, I ask that you take this church today. Take it to a new place. Take it to a new beginning. Father, let today be the first day of the new year that we change things in Biker Church of Wiley, Texas. Amen. And that we make this place a better place for you. Yes. And that Jesus can be served here. Yes. Father, thank you for your blessings. In God's name I pray. Thank Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes? They are. Yeah. Speak. I Hang on. I don't know how many of y'all actually monitor the Biker Church uh, prayer network, but... Um, I'm looking for prayer workers. My mom's always raised me to prayer works, and I've seen it in this church. One of my co-workers, his 14-year-old daughter, her name is Kaylee, just found out she has leukemia oh, no. two days before Christmas. Oh, his mom and dad, her mom and dad are struggling. Oh, yeah. I believe that she can be healed from this beyond a shadow of a doubt. I'm trying to get him to come to church. I'm trying to get him to bring her to church. He's never been to church before. Um, being out in the oil field. Now he's out of the oil field. I'm trying to get him to come to church. So y'all pray with me that a miracle can happen in that family and that they'll start coming to church. Amen. Amen. Okay. Oh, Thank you, Hiss. Thank you, Dear Heavenly Father God, you said that when two or more gather in your name and whatever we ask for, you will be there in the middle of it. Yes, ma'am. Father, this morning I lift up this family to you. Yes. We know leukemia is beating in this young girl's life yes, right now. Yes. We know you just healed it in the name of Jesus. It yes. can be done. Father, let the miracle of this show that you are the God that we say you are. Yes. Father, use this as an example for that family. Yes, ma'am. That they can turn to you with whatever is going on. Bring them in here. Yes. Bring them into some church in this area, whether it's this church or some other Bible believing, God fearing, God praising church. Yes. Get them in a church somewhere. Yes. And let them hear the honest word of God being preached. Amen. Turn their lives around today. Yes. But through your miracles that you've done in the past, present, and future, we know you can do it. We know that it works, and we know that it brings people to God. Amen. We're asking for a miracle today. Yes. That her lungs and her heart and everything in her body that's infected with this terrible disease is immediately cleansed. And as she jumps up shouting hallelujah and praising the Lord this morning, that yes. she knows God touched her. Yes. And that her whole family sees it, and they change their lives immediately. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, I ask this stuff. And anybody that agrees with me, say amen. 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 Let it be done in the name of Jesus. Let's... One more minute, Bubba. One more minute. She keeps saying I got less on the string this morning. Les, now it's your turn. Wait a minute, Les. Go ahead, Les. A spiritual leader has told us what we're supposed to do. And I have practiced to say what he said. But he said, I'm going to say, make sure your name is in the uh, book of life. Because if it ain't, you're going to hell. And you don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Neither do I want you guys to go there. Amen. So let's try to get it together with the good Lord. Thank you for joining us today. If you have prayer requests or need to contact us, please email us at bikerchurchwileytexas at gmail.com or call 214-283-0620. Please send all written correspondence to 303 Highway 78, Suite 103, Wiley, Texas 75098. And if you wish to make a donation, please make all checks payable to PSMM. God bless you and have a great day.